So, remember that video I did about the NVIDIA reboot of Ampere, where I said that they would bring out a few more models, including ones with LHR on them, so that they can better control, of course, which dyes go to miners and can be marked up to them, and which dyes go to gamers. Well, yeah, that all basically happened, but, well, people may not know this, but there's been rumors circulating around on forums that miners have been able to get their hands on plenty of non-LHR cards to this day. And, in fact, I do know that there were a small amount of 3080 Ti's produced without the LHR, you know, locks on it before switching over to all a LHR 3080 Ti's. And to this day, I'm under the impression that the overwhelming majority of 3080 Ti's are still LHR, limited Ethereum hash rate cards, that have very pretty powerful uh, controls on them to stop miners from using them, at least for Ethereum, through CUDA, so that NVIDIA can also update it to not mine other algorithms as well in the future, too. But what about the 3070? What about the 3060 Ti? Those always had dyes that were widely produced for a while that were excellent at mining. I have a 3070 Founders Edition, and that thing mines very well. NVIDIA's not making those anymore, are they? Well, I'm here to report that, yeah, uh, they are. What you're looking at here is a room full of non-LHR RTX 3070s that just arrived this week for sale to gamers and, of course, to miners. And in fact, when I asked this source, which is not just some guys, is someone I've talked to for a while about the upcoming shipments of 3070s, he told me that the overwhelming majority would remain as non-LHR models for weeks. And reaching out to another distributor source of mine, I mentioned this whole LHR thing. Are you under the impression that you're going to not get non-LHR models for much longer? And he said, you know, now that you mention it, Tom, the overwhelming majority of our arriving 3070 stock is non-LHR. Last week, I thought this was just the last remaining stock, but now it's late July, and most of our arriving 3070s remain as non-LHR models. The majority of upcoming deliveries are non-LHR as well. This individual was shocked when he realized that, yeah, it doesn't seem like the LHRs are replacing anything for some AIBs. And once I finally got a hold of a couple AIB contacts of mine, some of them were very open with me. One person said that NVIDIA is indeed requiring AIBs to switch to LHR models on paper, but that there are no concrete requirements for how long they can twit take to switch over their production lines and that to be honest they know the non-LHR models are going to sell for a higher price far longer and so they want to keep making as many non-LHR 3070s as possible for as long as possible and this was backed up by other AIBs that said that they are buying these dies direct from NVIDIA so NVIDIA would have to be aware of it but perhaps they're just letting some AIBs drag their feet more than others. They all AIBs agreed that eventually most SKUs would be mostly LHR, but that they were going to drag this out for as long as they could. And again, remember, these are different dyes and NVIDIA selling them. So NVIDIA is aware that this is going on. And to a certain extent, at least right now, is probably okay with this not really being to help gamers. In fact, I was also told recently that NVIDIA intentionally leaked that mining driver for the 3060 so that miners buying up 3060s could use at least one old driver to mine on it. And again, it would increase demand for their products. Now, speaking of the RTX 3060, I've actually got some information to share about this little 12 gigabyte card right here. You see, I did say early this year that NVIDIA never really wanted to launch that version of the 3060. The initial plan, as covered by me and by Gamers Nexus, was to launch a fairly profitable 6 gigabyte model for just above $300. But NVIDIA was worried after seeing how well top RDNA 2 performed and was priced that AMD might price the 6700 XT, or at least the 6700 12 gigabyte pretty close to $300. Now, of course, that's not what happened, but NVIDIA did not know it at the time. And so, well, it was either putting the 3060 at 200 and about $50, which, well, Ampere is an expensive lineup to produce. And again, watch my previous videos if you want to know why. Or 
making it more expensive with more RAM, they decided to give it 12 gigabytes and price it slightly higher so that it could head off some sort of cut down Navi 22 card. And that's just not out. And NVIDIA really regrets putting 12 gigabytes on this graphics card because of how much GDR6 prices have exploded. And I'm really not kidding. Based on multiple AIBs and other contacts that have been reliable for me for over a year now, GDR6 prices are over $10 a gigabyte right now. And actually, that's higher than what you can get GDR6X for because... Well, only NVIDIA is using GDR6X, and they actually bought up large stockpiles from Micron at the Ampere launch, millions of chips. So NVIDIA knows that they should have just put really 6 gigabytes of GDR6X on the 3060, not 12 gigabytes of now more expensive GDR6. Hindsight's 2020, and actually... That's why they launched the 3070 Ti, just so all of you know. It wasn't pointless. NVIDIA right now is probably making more money on a 3070 Ti sold, even if it was at the same price as a 3070. And if the 3060 is far more expensive than NVIDIA initially intended it to cost to produce because they gave it so much of the GDR6 non-X memory... A lot of my contacts believe that NVIDIA just isn't producing them or not producing a lot of them. After all, why would they produce a lot of 3060s when everything sells right now? Let's just make the far more profitable GA-104 and GA-102 models. And that's actually not entirely true. And this is the most interesting part of this video that you're going to want to pay attention to. It's not that NVIDIA hasn't been producing a lot of GA106. It's just they've been prioritizing them for a laptop up until now and building up a lot of stock for the 6600 XT launch. You see, NVIDIA knows everything on the store shelves will sell. And again, as I've covered and Gamers Nexus has covered, they are working with AIBs to sell grossly inflated priced AIB models to most gamers. Why even release these yet when you don't have any competition from AMD? But they are stockpiling desktop versions of this and the 3060 Ti. That is why you haven't been able to get a hold of them on desktop. And I am told with 100% confidence from one of my best sources that in fact, NVIDIA is planning to blast a ton of these things off right before the 6600 XT launch. In fact, I am told that NVIDIA expected AMD to launch the 6600 XT by August, and so they have more stock ready of 3060s and 3060 Ti's than initially even intended. And, well, okay then, what about AMD? Well, I am told that despite AMD, of course, having to deal with more NVIDIA shenanigans around one of their graphics card launches like they have this whole time i think they will also have decent launch stocks supposedly far more than previous launches which listen to me were record shipments from amd in the high end for the company and i know people doubt that but it was just gamer demand that made it sold at, sell out and well it should be launching for $350 to $379. I'm actually under the impression that AMD is just aware now that they will never be able to plug all leaks from their company. And so they intentionally told as many people as they could they were planning to price the 68 or I'm sorry, the 6600 XT at $400 to see what the reaction was. And if everyone freaked out like crazy, they would put it far below $400. But if people just got a little mad, eh, maybe they put it at $380, just below the 3060 Ti, which the 6600 XT will be weaker than, people, despite some dubious leaks coming out. And, well, I guess this gets into the part where I really hope people listen to me this time, because it really... It really isn't in my best interest to tell you guys this because the people that won't get a graphics card when they want it will undoubtedly say that I lied despite AMD's financials proving what I said about shipments last year from both AMD and Nvidia and this is backed up by reports from Gamers Nexus are true. Even if AMD launched 500,000 6600 XTs, and NVIDIA launched 1 million 3060 and 3060 Ti's in August, it just would not be enough to satisfy the amount of demand out there. I cannot go into specifics because, well, I don't want to give away my sources, but let's just say that the impression I have at this point overall is that there are at least 2 million more PC gamers looking to get one of the latest 
graphics cards from either Ampere or RDNA 2, and that, well, what's probably going to be supplied is about a sixth of that total at most, and it probably won't even be that much. So yes, you're going to probably see a bunch of tech tubers who only know one part of the picture as usual, saying all these cards are coming, and they are, but that... Well, prices will likely go down slowly, do not expect these prices to crash overnight. And this is another big thing I want to say in this video. Some tech tubers right now, I've noticed, are acting like everything is going to be below MSRP by the end of summer. And I'm here to tell you guys that based on literally everyone I can talk to in supply chains, that is absolute bullshit. There is still a ton of gamer demand. Quantifiably, millions of gamers want cards. And it's still, though there will be some downward pressure on pricing soon, it's not going to be a crash below MSRP overnight. And this is undoubtedly also because GDR6 and packaging prices and tariffs are also up. It actually costs more to make these cards now. AIBs don't want to... They're already used to making decent margins. They don't want to make below cost on selling these cards, and some of them would be if they hit MSRP or at least close. And those substrate shortages, they are still, they are still subsisting, and they will all the way into quarter two. And the final thing to say about why these crashes, there will not be a pricing crash overnight, is that, well... <laughs> Those miners selling off $270 3060s in China right now, you guys got to look up the details of those deals. Those cards usually require you to buy from them in person and buy hundreds of them. And so by the time you get those $270 used 3060s out of China, you're going to have to be paying for shipping costs and then make a profit yourself. Those aren't going to be sold below MSRP in the West anyways. I don't really think those mining 3060s are going to do anything to help pricing anytime soon. And so, yeah, I do not believe a crash is coming imminently. I believe we're going to see a slow decline in pricing over this year until the fall when a new holiday season is going to come. And the pandemic is not over with some countries possibly locking people inside to game again this winter. And I think the pricing is going to stay above MSRP for the remainder of this year, although it will be lower than now. And also, crypto is not about to die. Ethereum's switch to proof of stake is likely to be delayed till next year. So overall, what am I saying? Well, the 3060s are being produced, just mostly for laptop and being put away waiting for the 6600 XT launch up until now. There's a lot of these cards that are going to flood the market in August compared to now, but NVIDIA practically hasn't been selling them to the market up until now. And AMD will have a lot of 6600 XTs, but I, I gamer demand is over a million cards still need to hit the market. It will be unlikely to fully satiate everything in August. And so by the time things start getting a bit better, we're going to be in the holiday season anyways. And it's probably not... Although things will get better slowly, somewhat back to normal until quarter one, 2022, which, yeah, this is where I get to an even more depressing part of the video. When some of my contacts talk to people about low-end launches on desktop, it sounds like the 6600 XT and maybe a 6600 is likely to be the lowest AMD goes to this generation. And NVIDIA has almost no plans to launch low-end cards outside of laptop, this generation. In fact, I've heard, and I don't want to show quotes because this is sensitive, multiple people from NVIDIA and AMD openly discussing the want to kill off the sub $400 market. So as much as you complain that AMD consider putting the 6600 XT at $400, it's because they don't want to sell anything below it anymore. They see no point. They want the used market and APUs to make up the low end for now on. And look, I wish I had better news, and I hope this doesn't make a bunch of people attack me again just for being the messenger. I'm just telling you what's about to happen. I'm not promising you you'll be able to get a hold of the card, and I'm not saying I'm happy about it. So I'm not happy about this, but there's one more thing I actually do kind of want to say. If someone were to come to me right now, I've been thinking about this. If someone were to come to me and go, what lesson do you think NVIDIA learned from this generation after doing all of the stock and pricing and MSRP manipulation, do you think they'll do it again? And my answer actually is no. And that's because the lesson Jensen likely learned 
from Ampere and all of this manipulation is that it was entirely unnecessary because gamers would have swallowed higher prices anyways. It doesn't matter, you see. It was not only not worth it, but entirely unnecessary for NVIDIA to pretend that Ampere could be sold at a consistent profit at $700 with those awesome coolers and that really packed tight GDR6X. Gamers clearly don't care if NVIDIA manipulates prices, sells their cards directly to miners instead of gamers, or really does anything. They'll say they care and then buy their cards anyways. And that's what NVIDIA's relying on by shotgunning a bunch of 3060s next to the 6600 XT launch. Because they know that as much as some people say they prefer AMD, if they can outship them, people will buy NVIDIA anyways. And I'm not judging. I have an NVIDIA card in my system because it's good at editing, and so I'm not judging. But I think we all need to stop pretending that the ultimate play backfired because it didn't. AMD got just as much backlash despite not shipping directly to miners and trying to get as many cards to gamers, even at MSRP from their website, as they could. Something NVIDIA doesn't do. And that's the main information I have for supply for graphics cards from this year in this video. But... I will have much more to say because I am also told, this is teaser to my next video, that if the MSRPs do start to get hit by quarter two next year, NVIDIA will have an answer to that, an RDNA 3 as well. And they'll also be launching another gaming device sooner than people think as well. But you'll just have to wait for that video. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please remember to like it, share it, subscribe to Moore's Laws Dead, ring the bell button so you don't miss that next leak. And if you have the extra money, this is my job. You know, this is what puts food on the table. Please consider supporting me on Patreon where you'll get the chance to ask guest questions on Broken Silicon, ask me and Dan questions during the news episodes, get exclusive podcasts every week without ads in them. And then, of course, as always... Thank you for watching.